Hey, what's up, everyone? Alian here. And I was looking into pulse width modulation because I wanted to create some of these classic house sounds that you know from like the Juno 60 and Juno 6 and other synth uh, synthesizers from that time. And they all use like pulse width modulation for many of the classic sounds that you know, or that at least that I know and I wanted to create. And since I'm using Silent mainly, mainly um, I was trying to figure out a way to do pulse width modulation in Silent because it doesn't have the feature initially to, to just do that. So um, yeah, I figured out a way to do it, even though some forums and stuff said it's not possible. I said I, I thought I'd take a closer look and um, I actually found a way to set it up in Silent. So yeah, I'm just going to show you guys because I think it's a pretty useful technique. And to take a closer look at like the wave and this kind of stuff, we can just use two free plugins, uh, which I always like to use for this kind of stuff, which is the M oscilloscope from Melda Production, which uh, is a completely free plugin. I'm going to put the link in the description for you guys to take a look. And then maybe we're going to use a bit of span. Like uh, this is also sometimes useful to just have an analyzer. Um, also a free plugin. Um, also link in the description. So yeah, let's get started. Um, actually setting it up is quite simple. Just the, the theory behind it is maybe slightly complicated. So if you don't know that much about acoustics and how waveforms work and this kind of stuff, um, it might seem a bit like complicated how this all works, but I'm going to explain it in the end. But let's just get started by initializing the preset. So the way you do it is using two sawtooth waves, okay, and two different oscillators. Um, because if you use two sawtooth waves and invert one of them and shift the phase by 180 degrees, um, you basically form a saw, nah, you basically form a square wave, okay, or a pulse wave or whatever you want to call it. And this is necessary because Silent just gives you three different options when it comes to pulse waves, but um, what, like I said, it doesn't let you modulate it. But the moment you create your own pulse wave with two oscillators and then um, modulate the phase of one of them, um, you're uh, automatically modulating the pulse width of the uh, square wave. So maybe let's take a quick look at the theory and why that's uh, the case, because I think this is very useful and useful to know and understand also for other synthesis situations and also for other production situations, just to understand phase and these kind of things. So here we're looking at a saw wave, okay? Um, and basically a wave kind of has a positive and negative amplitude. It kind of goes back and forth through air and um, in this shape. So the amplitude changes like this over time. Okay. And then if we take a sawtooth wave at the exact same frequency, which means the wavelength is the same. Okay. Um, and invert it, which means in this case, okay, here we have go first to the negative amplitude and then move up to the positive amplitude, then move down and move up here. We move down and up and down and up instead of up and down and up and down. Okay. And um, so if we invert a, a wave like this with the exact same frequency and layer it on top of the other one, they perfectly cancel each other out, which leads to you not hearing anything because, um, yeah, that's kind of how sound works. So if you layer two waves on top of each other, their um, amplitudes add up at each given point, okay? So that's also what you call phasing, that when you have two sounds and... Um, you lay them on top of each other and um, they are at the same frequency, but one has a different uh, polarity, which means a different, uh, a, for example, a positive and not a negative um, amplitude at that point, then um, yeah, the sound cancels out. Okay. So yes, if we set up these waves like that, like invert one and put it exactly on top of the other one, you wouldn't hear anything because um, the amplitude at each point would be zero because if you add negative one to positive one, it adds up to zero. And just like these points, they're always exactly the opposite or every value of the red wave is equal to the negative of the blue wave. Okay. 
So yeah, they always add up to zero. And but once you start moving or shifting the phase of one of the waves, which basically means moving the starting point of where the wave starts and how it behaves or like where it goes, um, that's moving the phase. Um, will obviously change what these different amplitudes add up to. Okay. And when we talk of, we talk when it comes to shifting phase in degrees, which means one phase is one complete cycle of the wave um, equals 360 degrees, like the total degrees of a circle. Okay. So it kind of completes one phase, which means that halfway through the wave cycle, is 180 degrees okay so if i say shifting this waveform by 180 degrees it means shifting it by half a wavelength okay so this is what happens and what we can see here if we know now add up the waveforms or the amplitudes we realize that okay at this point we have um, an amplitude of one because it's zero and positive one and then this wave starts going down, but this wave starts going up the exact same amount, which means if you add these together at each point, the amplitude stays at one. And then here all of a sudden, since it's zero and one and here it's negative one and zero, it drops down to negative one. And the blue wave starts going down and the red wave starts coming up, which means if you add those together at each point, they again stay at um, negative one. So if we take this little tool over here to just draw this in, okay, and I'm just not going to do that that accurately to save some time, okay, and just connect these points, staying at neg negative one, going up, staying at positive one, going down, staying, and so on. So now if we move this down here, we can see, I mean, now it's a bit bent because I was dra drawn very quickly, but technically you would get a perfect square wave if both of them have the same volume or amplitude and are at the exact same frequency and you shift them by 180 degrees. So what you can realize is that if you don't exactly shift it by 180 degrees, but maybe a bit more or maybe a bit less, you will get a different pulse width um, for the pulse wave you're creating because now we can kind of See that here you're going to have a long pulse and then a shorter part and then a long part and a shorter part. Or if we move this further along, you get the short part and the longer part and so on. So like this, you can really create the exact pulse width of like the exact pulse width you want to create for your pulse wave, which is pretty cool. So taking a look at Silent, we realize, OK, we have these two saw waves. We invert them, which means like flipping it upside down. And then we can shift the phase, which is going to adjust the pulse width. OK, so actually, actually, let's look at this oscilloscope for a second to prove what I'm saying. I'm just going to use my keypad and I'm going to turn the volume over here right down because I don't want to blow your ears out. And right now we're using visuals. Of course, usually music is about listening. But when you wa work with um, waveforms, you might want to consider um you might want to consider like turning the volume down because over time it gets very annoying okay so here we go okay so here we see that and let me move this over here we see that we're adjusting the pulse width okay and obviously here we have an oscilloscope um, and so what kind of happens is this stuff moves up and this moves up and this moves down. And for a second, I was wondering like, why is that happening? But it has something to do with like DC offset, which is maybe a topic for another day, but I read into it because I was curious, like what's happening. And basically you, in a way, if you have to have the different, the same amount of amplitude or energy on one side, um, and the other one as well. So you have to have the same amount of positive amplitude as negative amplitude. Like this isn't like completely correct, I guess, the way I'm phrasing it, but I hope you understand. So since this, um, since once you're moving around the phase and this part over here gets um, shorter and this one gets longer in order to have the same amount of amplitude, 
the visuals just kind of mo move this one down because I mean it's getting longer and in order to stay the same amount of uh, energy within it kind of has to go down that's maybe not the best uh, explanation but I hope it will do just so you know that it's actually a, a real pulse wave and not some other weird thing that looks like it's been shifted up or down it's just the way the the visuals work in this case okay and <clears throat> So now we want to modulate the pulse wave of uh, pulse width, obviously. And what I realized, like if I use an LFO, for example, it gives me the option to modulate phase A, B, or phase A and B. And that is, um, which basically means I cannot modulate the phase of oscillator A compared to oscillator A1. I can just modulate the phase of part A of silence compared to part B of silence, okay? Which means if I want to modulate the pulse wave, I cannot use oscillators A1 and A2. So I'm going to turn this one off and go over to part B and let's just use B2 because it's right here. Use the saw wave, invert the saw wave, maybe start at this point to start with the pulse wave, okay? And um, oh, maybe just to show you guys, if we don't move the phase, now I'm actually pressing the key. Oh, right now we hear something because I haven't turned off the voices. Now I go to, now I'm pressing the key, but we don't hear anything and we also don't see anything happening over here. Okay, once I start moving the phase, it starts coming in. And once again, we see the pulse width being modulated. So now we can actually do pulse width modulation because we can now modulate the phase of side B and give it, let's just give it half, like a half rate, give it some gain. Let's do a triangle wave. I like to use triangle waves because they're a bit smoother. So um, when you use LFOs because sine waves get very quick in the end and then, you know, like while the triangle wave is kind of constant which I like. So now let's, I'm just pressing one key and not touching any other buttons, but we're modulating the pulse width. So obviously now we can say how much, let me move this over here. How much do I want to modulate the pulse width? Okay. How quickly do I want to modulate it? And this basically says how far does it go? And in this case, I don't completely get the difference between like, the gain and the phase. Maybe I should look into that a bit. Like um, pushing it up, up more over here is going to have a similar effect like the gain has, I guess. But maybe let me go back on that and or someone knows, just put it in the comments because it's kind of a brain teaser to figure out what the difference is right now for me. Um, so yeah, but that's how you can modulate the pulse within in Silent 1. And it's a pretty useful technique to just create some thickness, some movement and these kind of thing. Because if you use analog synthesis, you kind of have filters moving like through your block of frequencies and you can either take off the top or you can take off the bottom or you can take off something out of the middle, you know, but kind of having the frequencies within the sound change over time makes it sound more alive okay because you don't have static frequency sitting there and if we now take a look at span okay and and take a look how the frequencies behave they kind of start shaking and moving around okay um because if you have checked out the pulse waves and what they look like and oh, and what they look like in a uh, how do you call this thing? Analyzing thing again, spectrogram, I guess. Um, maybe let's let's go to the higher resolution. I think it's a bit too slow to really see, but what I kind of wanted to show you guys, maybe if I initialize the preset, um, this is all a bit of extra stuff. Like obviously, we already covered pulse width modulation by now, but this is kind of extra interesting things I came across is I kind of checked out what, um, so 
what different what the difference between different pulse waves is okay like and well in general when you have a pulse wave it gives you a wave with a fundamental and then odd harmonics okay i'm going to go into that maybe another time because i don't want to make this video too long but you can kind of see that if you change the wave that different harmonics start showing up okay and the way they are like this first of all the amplitude of different harmonics is different in different pulse waves and there are even different harmonics within these pulse waves which means once you start modulating the pulse wave uh, pulse width let's just do that over here real quick again for you guys to see um invert phase in a bit okay so now we see that if we change the phase the frequent uh, frequency con content changes changes quite drastically you know like which means that if you modulate this over time you also get a frequency change over time okay and that's really cool and i think that's why it's a um like a very popular technique because like i said like in analog synthesis or subtractive subtractive synthesis it's not that easy to get like these um these frequencies moving okay because you're just like filtering some parts you can filter t t uh, frequencies over time but it's all about using a static ice block which is basically one wave and then um yeah kind of doing stuff to that ice block but kind of changing the ice block and what like the the basis of what you're working with over time makes it more natural and also thicker and can create very cool and interesting sounds so yeah that was a slightly longer than expected tutorial tutorial on, on pulse width modulation and silence and yeah basically it's not a tutorial but just me sharing what i figured out and I'm going to keep working on uh, learning some other techniques in silent because um, I like to have them in my arsenal to make cooler sounds. And yeah, having this one is very useful, especially if you want to make like classic deep house and these kind of things, because like I said, synthesizers like the Juno and others, they always have an option of doing pulse width modulation because it's such a cool uh, technique. And silent doesn't have it, but you can set it up yourself. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, thanks for watching and I hope to see you around. Feel free to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with what I'm working on and what I'm learning. And oh boy, 18 minutes. But fair enough. I mean, we had a, we covered a lot of info and it takes a while to figure out and to wrap your head around these kind of waveform things and phase and shifting it. Anyway, good. Take care. Bye.